intro music today. Yay! Woo! Uh, I'm Pixie. I'm Sam. And I'm Pyrosim. And you're listening to Nerd Talk this fine Tuesday evening, the last show of December 2011. Actually, the last show of 2011. Yep. This year's done. So done with this year. Maybe we should do a year wrap-up thing. I don't think the year was that interesting. Honestly, next one going to be better. You're hoping. For, for reasons not involving a hypothetical apocalypse. All right, then. Yep. Uh, this show, Pyro is going to review... Torchlight, and also Blur, and also, um, some rhythm game that is not as good as Audio Surf. To such an extent that Spoilers. I don't even remember its name. We Beat review Hazard. not Audio Surf. It's Beat Hazard. It's not Audio Surf. I'll tell you that much. Yep. In anyway. advance. You don't even have to listen to the whole show to find that out. <sighs> also, Sen and I are going to go over our Christmas loot. And I hope Pyro got some loot, too. Slash Solstice loot, because that was what we celebrated. <laughs> yeah. I did. I'm, I'm wearing a new hat on the camera, and then my camera's sitting on a new tripod. And I got both of those things for Christmas. Also, those of you watching our video cast will notice our studio has a new addition. Meet Snipey. You named it. The highly inaccurate turret. Because it only ever goes off after you walk past. Anyway, we've turned it off because otherwise it would be making all kinds of noise yeah. during the show. No, and it, we would not it, want that. It would just be talking We'll non-stop. demonstrate later. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to join us on the couch. Ah, uh, the couch, which is getting replaced this week. We'll have a new couch for next time we do Nerd Talk. Next year is going to start on a new Nerd Talk couch? Yeah, new couch. That's right. It's coming. I'm so excited, you guys. Poor couch. We'll have a memorial to couch. This is the couch that started it all. Yup. Or we used to so, sit in front of it. For our reviews today, I'm reviewing a bunch of slightly old games for two reasons. First is that it's just after Christmas, and no game studio ever releases a new game just after Christmas, so there aren't any new games out. The yeah. other reason is that Steam is having its Christmas time sale where there are incredibly good deals on everything. So all three games I'm playing, I picked up for like $5 collectively. Just yeah, those of you deal. who want to just like clean up on online bargains, Steam sale is is amazing. Like, no question. Like, if you put your Christmas loot to that, you could easily get like three or four games for dirt cheap. I typed blue instead of blur. <laughs> Had to correct our Facebook status. It was Torchlight Blur and Beat something. Beat Hazard. Beat Hazard. You know, I would probably play a game called just Beat Something. <laughs> Punch. Punch the game. I, I hope that those are two words, because... I, I could definitely deal with that. Otherwise, I'm misspelling it. Eh? Yep, it's two words. Well, the first game I'm going to talk about is Torchlight. Torchlight is Diablo 2, with newer graphics and, you know, a slightly different setting. It is actually made by some of the team members from Blizzard, who made Diablo 2 originally, and they did pretty much all the same things they did before. If you haven't played the Diablo series, it is built on the premise that clicking on things all day and watching on numbers go up is fun. And... It's, it's a pretty solid premise, if somewhat shallow from a storytelling perspective. The story of Torchlight is that there's a town, and there's only one town, so I guess it's more like Diablo 1 in that respect. And in Diablo 2, you kind of traveled over the surface of the earth. In Diablo 1, there was the one town with a haunted cathedral, and you went deep into the bowels of the earth. This is one town with a haunted mine where they're mining magic crystals. And you have to go down deep into the bowels of the earth, fighting monsters. And you fight them by clicking on them, over and over and over and over. Sometimes they drop loot, and that loot makes you stronger so that it takes less clicks to kill something. Yeah, this sounds exactly like Diablo 2. Our, our goal is entirely to collect loot. Sometimes that loot is unidentified, and you need to use scrolls of identifies to find out 
what the magical enchantments on the loot are before you can equip it. And if you take that loot back to Deckard Kane, he'll identify it for free. Wait, actually, that's Diablo 2. Yeah, that but... is Diablo. <laughs> okay, there's no Deckard I Kane think in that's Torchlight. The joke. And, and if we're playing Diablo 3, we get Deckard's niece. Really? I don't know that much about Diablo 3 yet. I know that much. That's about it. I know precisely. So, nothing. <laughs> Torchlight came out in somewhat the giant gap between. Diablo 2 and Diablo 3 because Blizzard takes forever to develop its games. For people who are like, well, I've beaten Diablo 2 a hundred times, but I want I want Diablo 3. Torchlight is basically their exact fill-in. The one major disadvantage that Torchlight has over Diablo 2.5 is it does not have online play. So one of the big draws of Diablo 2 is Battle.net. And yeah, once you have your super special loot, you just go beat people with it. You'd, you'd play with other people and, you know, get on with a whole bunch of other people who have all of their maxed out loot and go beat Diablo and Ball and the cow level. The cow level being, of course, harder than the Demon of Destruction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta kill those really strong cows. Torchlight... Same thing, no cow level, but single player, build up your loot, go down into the dungeon forever, kill things. I don't know if Torchlight is bottomless. It might be. There are special levels at certain points in the dungeon that are not randomly generated, but most of them are randomly generated, and the special levels are somewhat few and far in between, and not really that important in the grand scheme of things. Um... There are some quests that are very World of Warcraft style in that there's exclamation points over quest givers' heads and then they turn into question marks that are gray and when you complete them they turn yellow and you get you do those and you get better loot and XP and those are all scripted. I don't think I think there's one set of those that are randomly generated and that's a robot who claims to be a bard and who sings in like a really lame robotic voice that's like, you know, 50s movies about robots would cast their voice as. And, and he, he claims to be a bard, which is funny. But he sends you to kill uh, strong bots, monsters at every multiple of five level, and he gives you a reward for that. So yeah, that's <clears throat> Torchlight. If you liked Diablo 2, it's a game for you. Well, let's if talk about it graphically. What are the graphics like in this? Are, are the, we talking as good as Diablo 2, or, or are we a step up now? Are we a little higher quality? Well, it's a bit funky because the graphics are better than Diablo 2, but then they moved towards the cartoony, misproportionate style of World of Warcraft. Okay. So it's it's a bit... The character models are all bubbly and rounded. They're right. higher poly, but they're bubbly and rounded, whereas in Diablo 2 they were pretty realistic. And how about our monsters? Do we have a good variety, or is everything just kind of a palette swap of, like, three different types? Um, the monsters come at you slowly. You're fighting ratlins, which are bipedal rats, for, like, six levels of the dungeon. But after you get a ways down, you encounter a fair variety of other monsters. There's spiders and, um, giants and trolls and wizards and ghosts. The monsters don't have as much gameplay differentiation as they did in Diablo 2 because there was a particular class of monsters in Diablo 2 that consisted of like a bunch of weak monsters and a shaman that would resurrect them. Yeah. And there's those would be you have to fight those groups of monsters tactically because if you don't take out the shaman first, you're just going to be fighting the weak monsters forever. And there's not really anything like that in Torchlight that I've found. You just have to attack everything. Um, in situations where there's bosses, there will usually be a really strong boss that has a ton of health, and then a bunch of little adds, and you kind of have to deliberately focus down the adds before you can take down the boss, because otherwise they do so much damage to you that you die real quick. So, 
in that way, it's a lot like an MMO, which it's a lot like an MMO in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. but... But offline. Entirely offline. But only single player. Okay. So, let's talk about sounds. Let's, um, the uh, music, actually. The music is was one of the compelling features of both Diablo games, and the music of Torchlight is potentially, you know, bit for bit, the same MP3 files that shipped with Diablo 2. <laughs> they, they sound exactly the same. Alright. The Foley is also pretty much the same. You kill a monster and they go, Urk, and they flip over. And you go, bang, bang, and clop, clop when you're slicing and shooting. But is there any, like, disconnect, like, huh, that, that handgun sounds proportionally more powerful than it should be, or, wow, it sounds like I just took the thing's head off when actually I just, like, tapped it? No, it's all pretty good. Um, okay. When you're opening chests, and this is also the same as Diablo 2, for some reason you click on a chest, and then the items, like, fling out of the chest six foot high and then fall on the ground. And they I make always like that effect. effect. It's like, flip a flip a plop. It's, and so that, it's like, that same wee, sound effect and is here. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, difficulty. I said to demonstrate with our turret. What'd How? you name it? Snipey. I'm not very creative in my naming process. What do you want it to be named? Gloria? Because that would be silly. Right. Perfectly silly. Okay. So let's talk difficulty. How hard is uh, Torchlight? Well, I guess that's up to you, because there's, like, six difficulty levels that you can choose at the load screen. And a checkbox for permanent death. The... I would say the default mode, because it's the mode I've played on, and probably most non-masochist people play on, is not permanent death. And in that case, when you die, you have three options, which are... You can... Um, resurrect in town, and you don't lose any gold or experience or any durability on your items. And But the downside to that is that you then have to get all the way back down into the dungeon where you were, which is potentially a lot of walking. There are waypoints very rarely, like every uh, 8, 16 levels. So... If, if you die, you're pretty much sentenced to walking a lot, unless you want to give up experience and gold, in which case you can resurrect with full health right where you were, including with all the monsters still surrounding you. Or you can just give up gold and keep your XP at what it was and resurrect at the entrance to the level. So you get three options there if you're playing on non-hardcore mode. If you're playing on hardcore mode, you just game over and you, your character is deleted. That's a bit different from how Diablo 2 works, because Diablo 2 did have the hardcore mode, but when you died, you'd always be sent back to your town with no items, and you'd have to go find your corpse to retrieve your items. Um, in this case, you get a little more options. Um, I only played on normal difficulty, and it was about the same as normal difficulty of Diablo, and I'm going to assume that the hard and the very hard difficulties are about the same proportions. Uh, Yahtzee said it was really easy, and he's probably right, but I don't know that the games are supposed to be very hard. They're, if, if you want it to be hard, you should play on permanent death mode, and that's, that's when your actions really start to matter. The non-permanent death mode is basically just for the stimulus of I click on things and numbers go up. You can watch bars fill. Yep. And that's good and enough for I, most people. And then I get shiny, shiny loots that decorate my character. <laughs> Indeed. So yeah, th this is a whole genre of just clicking games. I'm kind of hoping Diablo moves away from this when Diablo 3 comes out, but I know it won't because people are addicted to the clicking. I, I don't see... I have no idea what Diablo could be if it wasn't this... Yeah. No, that's really what it is. That's what people loved about it, apparently. I, I click, click, click all day long. Like, there were Look people, at how successful Farmville is. There were people having contests to see how many, or who could finish the beta of Diablo 3 in as few clicks as possible. 
Like, that was actually a thing. Kotaku posted results for it. There is um, one other element than the clicking, and that's there is some character customization, not insofar as how you look, but you get stat points and you get skills, which you put into three different skill trees. Mm -hmm. And those give you special spells you can cast that have AoE effects or let you wear yeah. higher level armor and stuff. Oh, and there's one thing that I should mention, is that you get a pet, and your pet has an inventory, and you can send your pet back into town to sell things without you having to go back into town. So this is almost the, the precursor to the Old Republic's companion uh, trash selling system, except you can choose what you want to sell. And, and also it works. And also it works. I've never encountered a bug where you click on it and nothing happens. See, I'm like not I sure that's, the old Republic. I'm really not sure that that's a bug. I'm, I'm not sure that your companion isn't just like, you know what, I'm keeping this money. That's it. It's mine now. Well, the bug in the old Republic is that it the item work stay in at your all. bag. Underscores, I'm glad you found these Steam sales to be uh, to be great. Although I like the idea that if you get your affection too low with your companion in the old Republic, you could be like, sell my trash, and they could like, they could be skimming off the top. <laughs> They'd be like, no. Because they hate you. Really? Your Senta in the chat box? Yup. I hate you oh. some days. I haven't even looked at IRC. You got underscores. And by some, I mean most of them. Welcome, underscores. Good to have you. Hi, underscores. All right. The next game I have to review is Blur, which is Mario Kart. If Mario Kart took its racing a little bit seriously. Which it uh, doesn't. Which it does this. not at all. The thing about Mario yeah. Kart is that your skill has pretty much nothing to do with if you're going to win or not. Yeah, no, it's all about the random items that you generate and the random effects in the environment that hit you. Like, I, I've i seen people trying to take racing in Mario Kart seriously. And by people, you mean Luca. <laughs> uh, I also mean the people at, say, the various anime convention game rooms. Ah. Like... I've seen Luca get pretty hardcore mad at these. Yeah, but that's a... She's at least getting mad at the single player and what the computer is doing to her. But, like, the people who are, like, hardcore racing against each other and discussing strategies for, for playing Mario Kart, it, it's, like, it's like discussing strategies for Smash Brothers. Because, really, that is one of the most random, insane, skill-doesn't-matter games ever for fighting. And those things make them good party games. Yeah. Because no, you want everybody to be having fun at a party, whether they're good at the game or not. And well, if well, everybody's... Say, I love playing Smash Brothers with a group of people who can laugh at it. Yeah. Who can understand that the, the occasion when you throw the Pokeball and get the ultimate one is just as funny as when you throw it and get a, uh, a Goldie. Just as funny. One of my favorite party game experiences was playing Mario Kart with a whole bunch of people and racing to get 11th place. Because, you know, <laughs> racing for first place is really blasé, and, and 12th place just makes you a loser, because that's the end. But if you get second to last, then then you've you've achieved something. Well, it's basically just first place twice. You're right, so yeah, there's the two ones there. I have yep. twice as many ones that use, so clearly, I'm, I'm better. Yeah. Yes. No, that that's totally the, the way to handle these party games. You set a random extra goal that is more fun to get than just going for the best. Mm. Blur, however, it, it's like playing Street Fighter against people ten times better than you and setting your goal as I'm not going to win, but I'm going to hit you with this rock in the face. <laughs> that, that's how I make myself feel better for being really bad at Street Fighter 4. Anyway, you were saying about Blur. Continuing, yeah, Blur. Blur has like hardcore racing mixed in with Mario Kart style power-ups, and the Blur! trick there is that Visual the power-ups are in sort of fixed locations, so you can plan your traversal of the track to choose which power-ups you're going to have, and so in a competitive environment, if you're against other hardcore Blur players, then there's no, you. I hit a random block and I got a blue shell, and then I won. You have to have gone and gotten the blue shell at least. And the power-ups, there aren't power-ups that are quite as Imba as the blue shell, 
but they're very similar. There is a Seeking Missile, which is like the Blue Shell, except it does not seek nearly as accurately or nearly as far. There's uh, bullets that fire straight across the track, according to the contours of the ground. So they don't respect height, but they do respect turns. So you have to kind of aim them while you're racing, which is kind of intense. As you're steering, it they shoot directly out of the front of your car, so you have to affect your steering with your aiming. And you're like... This, so- this sounds a lot like the rockets from uh, Wipeout. They are a lot like that. You have okay. to make strategic trade-offs as to if is drifting off of the track for a little bit so that I can hit this guy with this bullet going to gain me enough time on him that it's worth losing the speed that of being off the track. Oh, and cool. so there, there's planning in that aspect. There's, of course, nitros, which make you go faster. Those have to be in any power-up racing game. Oh, yeah, guaranteed. Uh, a shield, which blocks other attacks. And a mine, which... You can land. You can set in the track, and you can set in narrow areas to force other players to run into them. You know, and, just a uh, thought: these power-ups might actually make uh, Gran Turismo or Forza Motorsport fun. But see, and that's exactly the thing, because other than the power-ups, the game is Gran Turismo or Forza Mo- Motorsports. It's exactly like that. It's got lots of car models that are real cars, and so if you've got a car boner, you can be like, hey. I know all about these cars. I can look at them in my garage and I can paint them. But this one has a rocket launcher built into the front of it. But this one has a rocket launcher. Like all cars should. No, the... no they shouldn't. It makes Sunday morning traffic that much more entertaining. Unless you're in it. The single right. player campaign for Blur consists of a series of different types of events organized in a per-rival basis. So you've got about ten different rivals who are characters with models and brief personalities that are described by the narrator. And I thought Gary was an asshat. Imagine ten of them. (laughs) Ten of them. And so each rival has about ten events associated with them and some challenges such as... um, score 10 hits with bullets or shield 3 attacks or something. Okay, the mini-objective things is cool. And so you you have to beat all of the mini-objectives within the provided events for that rival to be able to race the rival one-on-one. And after the one-on-one race with the rival, if you win, then you get the rival's car. That's kind of cool. Okay, so, so graphically, how does this game look? It's pretty good looking. It's it's beautiful and it's sort of realistically styled. It's if you were a person who liked looking at cars, like a person who would go out to a park to see a real car show, this is probably interesting game because you could just look at the models and be like, "Oh, look, pretty cars." They, they're awesome looking. They're shiny. I like it. And the soundtrack, how is that fair? The soundtrack is also very nice. There's, you know, some sort of ambient original racing music. Pumps you up. Makes you want to drive fast. Okay, so we don't have any licensed music in there? I don't think there's any licensed music. Okay. Another question is, well, is there anything integrated where you can play your own music through, like, say, the car radio or something while you're racing? Because I imagine I can get better things. I don't know if there was... I don't think I saw an integrated system for that, but you can always just start iTunes before you start the game, and then well, I mean, of course there, there are, are a volume for sliders for music and sound effects. So you can, you can leave the sound effects on and turn the music off. Yes, I was just wondering if there was something built into the game for that. I don't let me, think let there is. Let me point this out to you. No, it doesn't seem that way. Splash down! For the Xbox, the Xbox had this feature, and I liked it there. (laughs) It's a pretty nice feature. I can't actually tell you for certain whether or not there is that that feature. 
that's one of those things I always really appreciated about the burnout games. Mm -hmm. They always do let you insert your own music mm -hmm. if you want it. And that is always a nice bonus to the game. But I've got friends. Because I've got my own drive fast music. Yeah, I've got friends who will just spend hours customizing a soundtrack to play in a, a burnout game. Um, one other thing that I should mention is that there's actually kind of a really good tutorial system wherein there's a fairly charismatic narrator who's doing brief cutscenes before missions, wherein she explains the rules and mechanics of the game, and they introduce each power-up one by one and all the controls. They're actually, there's no limitations at first, all the power-ups and controls are there from the first race. For the Proving Grounds, which is the first rival, kind of a fake rival, but the first category of events, they're stacked one after another to introduce all of the different mechanics of the game. And so, it's it's a good introduction if you're not, if you haven't played any games like this before. Alright, cool. Okay, so, Torchlight. Fun, yes or no? Torchlight, um... If you're into that sort of thing, I'd say okay. yes. If you're into the clicking dungeon loot RPG, this is something you would want. Blur, fun, yes or no? For everybody. Yeah. Anyone who is interested in a racing game could actually really get into Blur. Um, for some people, you could probably play it for 500 hours. For some people, you'd probably get a good solid 20 hours out of it if you're, you know not crazy into cars and racing. But I think just the basic 20-hour level, everybody's going to love it. All right, cool. Uh, so, I, I guess that brings us into our I next I think topic. he's got one more, don't you? I have one more review. So many mini-reviews. Beat Hazard. Beat Hazard. Oh, yes. Beat Hazard. It's Beat not Beat Hazard a is a rhythm game wherein you play using your own music. So, this is... <laughs> so this, this takes that feature that was missing from Blur and... And makes it the that. whole game. <laughs> Beat Hazard is... Screenshots of this. Twin stick shooter, wherein the pace of the action is determined by how fast and how loud the music you're listening to is so at the moment. So if you're playing hard style, then I guess you're kind of screwed. There's going to be a million um, objects on the screen at the time, but actually, I, I, when the I music I just pulled is... up a video of someone playing Beat Hazard to uh, Dragon Forces through the Fire and Flame, so this should be interesting. Yeah, then. The advantage you get when the music is intense is that your guns are stronger, so there will be lots more objects on the screen, but you'll be able to destroy them a lot faster. So, you're moving around with W, A, S, and D, and you're shooting with the mouse. A lot like Geometry Wars or any other twin stick shooter. Voxatron. And okay. other than that, it's basically asteroids for the Atari 2600 with a slightly larger variety of enemies. There are sort of boss spaceships that have a tractor beam that pull you in, and you have to shoot their guns to destroy them. And there's, you know, wads of trash that are flying around that are just asteroids and you're damaged if you run into them. There's power-ups that are bombs and missiles that you can use to clear the screen. They show up as little collectibles that you have to fly into. There's point multipliers that you can gather. And power-ups that make your gun stronger. And power-ups that are called volume which I'm not even really sure what they do. I think they increase what? the intensity. Volume. Volume. Hmm. All right, they... so I'm watching the video of how this game looks graphically, and I gotta say, I'm, I'm actually really impressed, actually. Lots of flair, uh, lots of great colors. It's like your own laser light show. I will say that the game opens up with a photosensitive seizure warning, and it is pretty <laughs> well merited. Yeah, this, this is actually really impressive. You're um, better off watching Magic Soldier Porygon on loop than playing Beat Hazard if you're photosensitive yeah. seizure problems. It, it does remind me a lot of Geometry Wars, just for what it is and, and how it plays. And 
But I think the game's selling point that, yeah, the, the game customizes itself based on what music you're using in the background is kind of a cool selling point. Um, it is cool, and I would be much more impressed with it if I hadn't already played several other games in this vein. Um, yeah. To a lesser extent, the Polynomial, and to a much greater extent, Audio Surf. Mm -hmm. Because Audio Surf sort of really affects the gameplay based on the music, and it does some yeah, deep this, analysis this of the music. seems to be only really affecting it in minor ways. Hazard only kind of does the surface changes, and mm -hmm. not as a result of rhythm and specific characteristics of the music, but just how loud the music is at any given moment. I... I I, I wanted to ask about uh, multiplayer because I'm I'm pretty sure that Audio Surf has some uh, comprehensive multiplayer elements. Um, what about Beat Hazard? Um, Beat Hazard actually has really good online multiplayer elements. I didn't play much of them, but when you're in a game, there's a bar on the bottom that's giving you little tips and stuff, and it yeah. frequently says. Uh, press F. It says some random chump is playing an online game. Press F one to join them, and <laughs> when you you just hit the button, and then you're in their game, and presumably it streams their music. I did not actually get to try it because I only bought Beat Hazard yesterday, and I'd been playing Torchlight and Blur most of the week. But yeah, I'm kind of impressed by this, to be honest. Like, if you've got the controller for dual stick on the PC, this might be worth investing in for. The sales price, the sale price that it's at right now. It plays plenty well with a keyboard and mouse. A controller would also work well. It it mm -hmm. does have Xbox controller support, and you can have the knockoff PlayStation controllers that also work. Yep. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right then. And so, uh, Beat Hazard, final verdict. Um, if you're listening to good music, it sounds like good music is playing when you're playing it. Um, probably. <laughs> I would play audio. Whether the audio is anytime. good is entirely dependent on your own tastes. If you think your audio is terrible, it is because you, in fact, are failing. Any time that I might be playing Beat Hazard, I'd probably be playing Audio Surf instead. And the only reason that's sort of not a really strong criticism, because Audio Surf is really, really good. Yeah. Audio Surf is exactly the same category, and it's better than Beat Hazard. Yeah, so this is mostly for people who are thinking, like, Audio Surf just didn't have enough action because I couldn't shoot things. Indeed. Alright then. Alright, so yeah, it, it so looks like if you like, the, hell, if you like the bullet hell shooters and want to see that combined with something along the lines of Audio Surf, this might be right up your alley. Anyway, so I guess it's time for or if you our feel like for having a seizure. Good lord! Uh, it, it's it is a very flashy game. I, I looked away for a second, and I'm still seeing flashes. All right then. So. So I'm gonna stop this because I'm tired of hearing Dragon Force. Nine minutes so much. How can you be tired of it? Never mind. Um, Nine minutes of Dragon Force. It's like the '80s are vomiting through my ears. So uh, I guess Sen wanted to do our privileged moment for the week and show off all the cool stuff you have. Did you want to turn this on? I guess we should. Okay, so... So this would be received... Think... This would be Think Geek's plush portal turret. Which has a little... pouch you, you can open in the bottom. go in the pouch here, it's got three modes set into it. Uh, one, two, and three. Three is the off setting, where it won't make any noise whatsoever, which... The, portal, the, whole the turret has been set on this since we started. Um, number one is, is the motion sensor as well as the uh, tumble sensor. So it reacts to being picked up. There you are. Oh, actually, nope, nope. One is only the motion sensor. One is the motion sensor. Yep. Two, 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 gives, two gives you the motion sensor, so if you wave in front of it, it'll do that. Yeah. Wait for it. Well, one of these is... Preparing to dispense product. I hope it doesn't we work because we're sitting on either turn. side of it.
Okay, three, two. Anyway, it's supposed to react to being picked up. Yeah, and in fact, we heard it do it a couple times. Just before the show started. Yeah. Now it's just shooting. Now it's just like I'm gonna shoot, shoot everything. Shoot forever. Else. I don't care if you pick me up. I will just shoot. So yeah, it makes shooting noises. I think I've got a broken turret. The <laughs> That's what they need to make next: the Wheatley turrets. To be fair, if the turrets in Portal worked like that, it'd be a much more difficult game. Right? I don't care if you pick me up, I'm going to keep shooting you. Anyway. Anyway, the other thing that... I... The, other, the other thing, the important thing that I would like to point out is that Sen got a new TV. So yes, we'll actually be playing our reviews on something besides the little, like, desktop monitor that we've been using for our reviews. And to solve for our need to very quickly prepare for the show today, we are using his old TV right now. As, as a, tripod. a tripod. Yep. There's a tripod with a monitor built into it. Not a TV. Nope. Yeah. It's a fancy tripod. It's a nice tripod. I suppose, it's worked out I suppose in the future we could use the turret. That's about right. I don't think it would sit very still, though. Put a screw in it. And keep trying to shoot us. Yes. Alright, so continuing. Um... The next thing I want to talk about is actually going to be our review for next week, which is a board game, because we haven't reviewed a board game since Halloween. So Super Dungeon Explorer, you've heard us talk about this a couple times since we've been to Gen Con last August. Yep, as well as the numerous cancellations and delays that it's had. So yes, it's finally out. It came out uh, last month. Uh, so from Cool Mini or Not and Soda Pop Miniatures. It's pretty clear who did what. Like... There's no doubt Cool Mini are not designed the models involved in this game, and it shows by the amount of complexity in them. And Soda Pop wrote the rules. Mm. Um, so what you've got here is a game that is... that It tries to recreate the, like, the console RPG uh, dungeon crawl game. So kind of like the, the arcade Dungeons & Dragons game, or, or later the Alien vs. Predator arcade game. You're, you're going for that arcade beat-em-up, just... Your character versus tons of monsters feel, and the way they they try to portray that in uh, the game comes with eight different characters that the person playing the heroes gets to choose from, each with their own different abilities and powers. And you choose these characters and go into the dungeon with the goal of destroying the things that are spawning the monsters and then beating the boss. So we'll go into it more next week. But it comes with a ton of miniatures that I spent, like, a All day and a today. half putting together. And part of yesterday. Yeah. Uh, it's 50-plus models in this box, uh, most of which require some degree of cleanup. And a bunch of cards, and you get six dungeon tile, or actually five dungeon tiles and one console tile. And, yeah, it, it's just a bunch of stuff in that box. So much that Battle Foam even released a foam tray set to fit in the box for this game. Which will probably be ordered at the end of the day. So yeah, we'll, we'll go into that more next week, but that's Super Dungeon Explore, and yeah. Mostly because it's the end of the year and the post-holiday season, and there will be no games coming out. And we're still not playing Doom with them forever until we hit 200 fans on Facebook. <sighs> anyway. Anyway. So you also picked up... The Old Republic. So, Finally, now that now that Pyrosim and I are half more than halfway to level cap, well, yes, you, you finally can, picked it you up. You can run me through dungeons. Now, now they're called flashpoints. You can run me through dungeonish things. Dungeon points. Flashpoints. There are no flash dungeons. dungeons. Flash dungeons. That that sounds like a horrible activity of doing the entire dungeon in your character's underwear, because the game won't what let you strip further. Thing? <laughs> well, there are no Chivos in this Dark game. Lord of yes. the Flash. That's actually kind of super disappointing now that you're mentioning it. I yeah, feel right. a hole in my life that there are no Chivos in the Old Republic. I so need Chivos. We need to make our own men. We will make our own list of achievements. Alright, the Nerd Talk list of Old Republic achievements. I don't see how this will be hard, and I think we should have that ready for next show. Oh, yeah. Alright, it's done. But yes, I finally have it, so we will be establishing the Nerd Talk Guild on the Ebon Hawk server. 
Because it only takes three of us, right? Woo! Yes. It takes four. Oh. Darn, we have to make a friend. Or possibly make another character. I think Pixie's brother is on the server. Yes. Done! Yes. Ha! He is playing the same class and the same race and the same skin tone and the very similar facial pattern tattoo. So we actually look like siblings in game and we didn't even plan it that way. Well, sweet. When you can add a surname to your character, then you can totally just have the same surname and roleplay that out. <laughs> yes, my brother, the Sith Warrior. No, it's we're both Inquisitors. He just oh, took yeah. the DPS stealth based. Um, Damage. Um, so you both just class. lightning things to death for fun. No, no, I took the lightning. Oh, okay. The assassin loses the ability to lightning people. Oh well, I suppose yeah, he does still have shock and whatnot, but he, he gains like a stealth ability. He can use double blade, lightsaber, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I keep finding those. Like everyone's like, "Hey, you can't use double bladed lightsabers, Mister. I hold two blades." I'm like, they don't have duct tape in Star Wars. I can't just tape these together. Well, the trick is, if you use double-bladed lightsabers without training, you cut yourself in half. I'd assume it'd be harder to just use two independent sabers. No, because then you can maneuver them a little more easily, whereas you've got two very deadly ends, and if you're not careful about maneuvering them, you're going to hit yourself with one. Well, I one might be harder than skills. the other, but the, the trainings will still be incompatible with each other. I guess you're right. These, at least, the lethal end is pointing away from you at all times. <laughs> no, I occasionally spin it and point it at my head, which is great when I have a gla graphics glitch and I just put it through the top of my own skull. <laughs> um, also, picked up this, which I'm very happy about. Malifaux released the next set of avatars, which this was apparently Arcanist Month, as the two alternate champions and avatars that came out were Rasputina and Ramos. Let's go ahead and pop her open here. People not watching the video stream, you're missing out. We're not streaming. Oh. So, it looks like we've got People a... not watching the video after the fact. Yeah. You're missing out. We have a hybrid resin and metal kit, which is kind of neat. I like that uh, Weird has been doing this lately. So we've got the core torso of the avatar, which is Rasputina in the chest of her golem. Mm -hmm. And little resin legs and its arms. Here's the metal bits in the second pouch. One of the things I really like here is that if you looked at the release image that they posted on the Weird site uh, when they showed that the model was coming in December, they had this weird fan head, which doesn't match the artwork mm -hmm. and kind of confuse a lot of people. Turns out it's actually just got an alternate head. All right, so then. you can pick which one you want. And then the only other metal bit is the uh, right hand of the golem, which for some, for some reason Malifaux has a thing that one of these hands must be metal, because Samus did the exact same thing. Yeah, then. One arm is metal for some reason. And of course, it comes with her little card. Metal. Oh, so metal. But yeah, this is another another fantastic avatar from Weird Miniatures. And I can't wait to see what they do with the rest of them. Alright, well. None of my loot was nearly so interesting. I got things like hats. Also, Luca, our resident feed sprite maker, made me these for Christmas. Yay, copyrighted characters! <laughs> It picks these cool hat. This is my Christmas. It's my solstice. So yes. I also have a book of all facts, which apparently you can just get these from uh, a generic bookstore. I think, uh, I think Thinking also sells something like that. It, it's reference. a pocket reference guide that just is charts and data. That sounds to me like it's just an alethiometer. It, it has everything, like cloud types. Because sometimes you need to know what clouds are. Um, water discharged through 100 feet of hose per degree of pressure. Is this book um, possibly powered by angels? Like, this is the coolest Oh, book the book. alpha meter? <laughs> Spoilers. Um, BT dubs. Different types of knots and bends and ropes. Let's see, what else we got? Currency exchange rates as of January 2010. That does sound actually pretty useful. Paint and finish types, including fingernail paint. That, that's one of the types on here. So nail polish? Yeah. Um, geologic time scale. So, so there's just random stuff in Yeah, it is a book of random facts. 
I'm a little more amused by the anecdote that came with receiving it, but that's not suitable flame, for airways. Flame or material color and temperature. So the temperature that various materials burn at based on color. Um, car rental toll-free phone numbers based on country. Yes, we get it. It's full of random stuff. Like, this... For anyway. six bucks, I don't see why not to carry one of these everywhere. Because you have a smartphone, which all of us do. True facts. What happens if you're not getting signal, sir? Then you may as well just die, because <laughs> if you're outside the internet, you're not alive. Exactly. Anyway, Pyro, any cool loot you'd like to tell us about? Nope. Just my hat and my tripod. I can't show you the tripod on the camera because the camera's attached to it. But I'm using the hat. And my other hat, which I've been wearing in, like, the previous three episodes, Pixie gave me for Christmas early. But you've already seen that for three episodes, because I had it for a while. Hat. Hats are also... Awesome. another hat. <laughs> two hats. Apparently only the, the two of us got hats. <laughs> I've had hats. I don't need more hats. My head can be adequately covered. I don't think you need more hats. Next show, I'll get one of the ones with the umbrella on the, or not the umbrella, the, uh, the propeller. propeller on top. Heck yeah, propeller beanie. That's awesome. No, I'm gonna get a propeller fedora. I'm gonna go classy with this. <laughs> See, just gonna, like, cobble MacGyver together or some sort of... A propeller into my fedora, yes. Okay. They, Seems they like a waste of both a propeller climbing. and a fedora, but whatever. And whatever duct tape or materials you use to combine the two. Oh no. We're gonna, uh, weld it. Well, that just set the hat on fire. Is the fedora made I of metal? I didn't say this was a good idea. <laughs> it's just a metal fedora. It's like you that stole it from Metal more Mario. That just by itself. Having a metal fedora? Yes. You can just line the inside. It keeps the like rays out of your brain. The government can't read your mind that way. Nope. The government that wants to read your mind? It's the corporations. And you craft foods. Speaking of which, craft foods will advertise for you. If you pay us. <laughs> In mac and cheese. So hey, I have one miscellaneous <laughs> note I want to mention on the show. That is unrelated sure. to anything we've been talking about. There was a book released the day after our previous episode called... do do do. Imperial Historia, which is a basically a photo book of the Legend of Zelda games, but it actually includes the official timeline that connects all the games that Nintendo has claimed they've had since forever, but has never been willing to show to anybody. I, so, I got this one. The canonical timeline oh. is out there. Damn. Sudden allergies. Oh yeah. called back cataloging. <laughs> it is as guilty of this. Is perhaps called that, but you know, there's fans of the series have been making up fake timelines like this forever, and Nintendo has been telling everybody that the timeline exists forever. So they've finally gotten they've, around they've just to just had it in a filing cabinet hidden away all this time. Actually, the official party line was that they didn't want to release it so that they couldn't be held to it if they changed their minds later. Mm, also a Lucas excuse. Indeed. But so, now this is, the canonical version is out, so all of the fan ones are now obsolete. You can know which links are the same link, and which links are different links. Someone can now win the internet. The, the, the like, one person out of On everybody who actually, form. like, got it, it right. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd like to post this link in chat, but I actually never bothered to open chat, so I'm going to paste it in <laughs> you said the link. and have have one of you guys post it in chat. You, 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 you just said link. I did say link. Link being a term for a web page and also for the hero of the world of Hyrule. Yep. And so, before we finish up this evening, I would like to give a special thanks to uh, Riot Games and League of Legends. For their recent bit of awesomeness for the holidays. Christmas so, Riot points. Yeah, anyone who has been deemed nice by, in other words, not getting banned in the past two months, 
received a special bonus of 450 riot points. The points that you can normally only buy with cash. For free. For the holidays. No, Just this for is not being a jerk. This is not enough points to actually buy a skin without spending any money. But it is kind of nice. No, you can get the, the sale skins with that. I guess if, if you wait for one to be on a discount, you might be able to get one. But this the email wherein they told you that you had 450 free riot points also mentions that they're thinking of adding ways in the game to earn riot points without spending money. Yep. Which would certainly be a nice thing. They've definitely proven that people are willing to throw down money to get their digital stuff. Mm -hmm. And that just by handing out a, an occasional bit of points for, say, not getting yourself banned for three months, seems like a nice thing. Hey, you haven't been a jerk for this period of time. Have a couple points on us. Seems like such a bad idea. Wouldn't discourage all of the negative play, but would certainly help. So yeah, uh, next week we will totally be reviewing Super Dungeon Explorer. Possibly also have a movie review, depending on what we can manage to go see in the coming week. The Sunmobile is currently in the shop, so we'll see how much I can actually drive. Yeah. So, I guess if we've got nothing else, this has been Nerd Talk. I'm Pixie. I'm Sam. And I'm Pyrosim. And you've been listening to Nerd Talk. We'll go play with lightsabers. Okay, do a sign off, please. We can edit that together right now.